just on sort of some other heavyweight fights coming up. Um, two fighters that you know obviously very well, Pulev and Povetkin, fighting Joshua and Dillian White, respectively. What did you make of those two fights? In particular, obviously, Joshua Pulev, Bob Arum, uh, is very confident that Pulev will beat Joshua. What, what's your thoughts? I think, um, you know, Pulev's a good fighter. He's a good technician. So he's no walkover. Not an easy fight for Joshua at all. So that's going to be... Um, that's going to be a good fight, and Pula's very up for it. He's gained a lot of experience. <laughs> He's corrected a lot of flaws he had when he fought Klitschko. He's learned a lot by it, and um, you know, and he is really up for that fight because I know he's promoted very well. And um, you know, I speak to Avalo, you know, quite regular, and you know, they're they're absolutely relishing the thought of that fight. So it's not somebody who's coming in thinking, oh, you know. I'm fighting Joshua this or that you know they really want it you know he said to me a Val only a few weeks ago he said step aside money he said we don't do weakness <laughs> he said we want that fight he said how could we can win it so like I said um, it'll be a good fight between the two of them you gotta you gotta fancy Joshua probably as the favourite in it <coughs> but you know it would not be an upset for Pulev to come away with it hmm and do you, how do you see sort of Alexander Povetkin against Dillian White? Obviously, Povetkin's getting a bit older now, but you know he's proved time and time again that he still belongs at world level. Well, it's the same. You know, it wouldn't be a shock if he upset White. You know, this is the level of fighters you're at. You know, the only thing I see with Povetkin, he does seem to get very tired later on. You know, mm. so um, you know if Dillian White comes in superb shape, we know we can do the rounds. He's he's dangerous all the way through the rounds. So like I said, um, slightly favourite again, you'd say Dillian White, but it's only slight, you know, so th that fight can go either way, because, you know, the fighting good fighters. One fight that a lot of people were really looking forward to, especially in England, was uh, Dubois and Joyce. Um, have you seen them up close in sparring with um, Huey? Has, has Huey sparred them? Yeah, I've seen both of them up close, and they're both very good. You know, the... the I, w I was looking forward to that fight myself mm. as well because it is it's definitely uh, <laughs> it's a fight that everybody wants to see you know they're both good uh, talents um, so yeah that, that's a fight where you know both of them's going to come at it and give it everything to win it you know they both want to win that much you know it's untrue you know the, uh, Joyce knows he needs to beat um, Dubois because you know Dubois up and coming and Joyce really isn't you know, he's of that age now. You know, he really needs to come through that fight at all cost. So it's it's one of them. So it is. It's a it's a it's a pick and fight. So like I said, it's very interesting. So that would be good when that fight gets uh, re put back on. What were sort of the differences you found when you saw them up close sparring with uh, Huey? Um, well, they've got different styles. You know, um, Dubois. He's you know he's behind his boxing. You know he's looking. He's looking, obviously, he's looking to feel his way and get it to land these shots. And um, Joe Joyce, he's, he just picks away, you know, he just picks away and he's not really bothered what you've, what, what you've, what he's got coming at him, you know. And uh, he just does his own thing in there, no matter who's in there, you know. He'll just, uh, he'll just flail away and he'll get stuck in, you know. But um, he has improved. Uh, I think you know every fighter that you know they're all improving all the time so it'll be a very good fight but they are they are different but Joyce is a fighting man and uh he'll def Dubai will definitely have to nail him to the canvas because he's got a he's got a very very good engine you know he mm. throws a lot of shots and in the, in mid to late rounds Joyce he doesn't he doesn't back off he keeps coming you know he's all my years like an express train he just keeps coming and he's got a terrific engine He's a superb athlete, you know, the guy can fight, you know, and he's tough. But like I said, he's, the downside is because he knows he's got a good engine and uh, he comes in and he's like that type of a fighter, he can leave himself open. So, you know, and Dubois is a big puncher. So no matter how good your engine is and how good it's not, if you get it right, you'll go. And let's not forget there's a third man in the ring, you know, watch it. So when they, when they, when they get up off the floor and they're a little bit dazed and, and you know you can't afford to have no legs from under you when somebody like Dubois is coming at you with you know maximum power so you know all this all this is uh, makes it a 50-50 fight 
Where do you think sort of the winner would go from here? Obviously, Frank Warren said that possibly Daniel could fight Deontay Wilder um, at some point. Um, where do you sort of see the path for the winner? I think, yeah, you know, it's a, it'll be a very good win for either fighter. And uh, obviously, you know, sky's the limit for the winner. You know, there is good fights out there. But, you know, um, you know, Martin Bowers, his trainer, you know, and, uh, the, you know, they're very good trainers. They're astute, they're astute boxing men. And they know they know their boxing. So, like I said, I, you know, there's no rush with a young fighter. But, you know, if he's ready, you know, put him in there. Mm. Um, I do want to ask, obviously, other a few other talking points in boxing right now. Um, Mike Tyson, Evander Holyfield, even James Tony, talking about sort of possible ring returns. What what do you make of this? I don't make anything of it. You know, let's all right. Let's look at James Tony in his heyday, one of the best fighters to ever enter the ring. You know, everybody sat up and watched James Tony fight. That guy, he could fight like nobody's business. Let's have a look at his last recent fights. You know, they're, they're not really worth looking at. You know, he's, he's excessively weight, he's slow on his feet, he's ponderous up and down, you know, can get brain damage. You know, so like I said, um, it's a different time. You know, we don't go old for no reason. Age is for a reason. You know, youth and you're young, you know, you know, it's like saying, you know, when I was 30, you know, was my beard white? No, it was as black as yours. <laughs> so we're all getting on for a reason. Now, I'm not saying that it's not good sport. If they really want to do it, they're keeping fit, they're keeping healthy, you know, that's good for them. But, you know, are they, are they somewhat tainting their own legacy by, look, by letting people see what they was back then to what they are now? Because they're not going to be the same fighters. So for me, as a boxing man, and training professional fighters to box and box for world honors and stuff like that, I just see it as um, it's not not for me. It doesn't hold any interest for me. Only only the fact of like looking at it and the occasion and, and watching two of these old guys get at it, you know, but that's interesting. But as far as the boxing as a purist looking at it, it doesn't hold any interest for me at all. Would you be concerned even for, sort of for their safety even in exhibition bouts which they're talking about for charity? There's never an exhibition bout for charity. You know, when them gloves go on, they're wrapped up, they, you know, they, they're wrapped up like pieces of concrete, you know, and they're getting in there and both fighters want to put on the best performance. And for exhibition or not, they're looking at the other man across that ring. They've got one thing in their mind and that's destruct, you know, and have a good knockout. <laughs> there is no game. You know, there is no pitter-patter up and down. You know, they're going to go hell for leather at it. Whether, whatever spin you want to put on it, whether it's an exhibition, whatever they want to put on it, <coughs> you know, they're, they're, going to have, they're going to have a proper war, aren't they? You know, they're going to try and dismantle each other in that ring. Because would you or me want to see anything different? Do you want to see them have a, a shadow box fight or something? You know, it doesn't make sense, does it? Mm. So it's, it's going to be... Whatever disguise they want to put on it, it's going to be the real thing. You're going to see both them fighters doing the very best that they can do to win. But would it have to be sort of against each other? Because if you put them in with an active heavyweight, um, even someone with more losses and wins, you know, surely it's going to be a bit of a struggle after so many years out of the ring. Yeah, I think so. You know, I wouldn't be putting them in with any young heavyweight. You know, whatever the record is. Mm. You know, because they're gonna struggle. Because it's all right, it's all right in them pads, but you know, you got to find your feet. It's about the timing, walking the distance down. You know, it's 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 a lot. You know, so like I said, um, I think against each other because it's fair. They've all had the layoff. They're all coming back. They're the same age. They've all had careers. So then, if they want to come back and do it in the ring, that's up to them. But um, I just. I don't. I don't know. I don't think it's. Um, it's not for me personally, but I can see. I can see there would be an interest there. Peter, final one. Um, the British Boxing Board uh, have laid out plans to return in July, um, with obviously uh, quarantine in a hotel, perhaps um, corner men, referees wearing PPE. Um, but I think one sort of major stipulation that some people questioned, especially some of the fighters I've spoken to, 
is the no spitting in the corner. Um, have you seen these guidelines and what, what did you sort of make of them if you had? Well, when no spitting in the corner, you know, they normally they have a spit bucket, but like I said, when they're being wiped down with the towel, you know, you squeeze the nose anyway and they blow the nose into the towel, so that's not a problem. You know, and, uh, you know, and when my fight is in the ring, I make them take water between the fights, not just swill the mouth out and they drink it. So, you know, they need to be keep kept hydrated. So it's important. So uh, that's not really a problem for me. Okay. And um, whatever them guidelines are, I think it's uh, it's, it's great. I just uh, I just want to get get on and get in there with the fighters and get fighting. So whatever rules we got to oblige to with the boxing border control, it's in everybody's interest. So we'll just do it. Look forward to it coming back, Peter Fury. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much. Um, well, much appreciated your time today. And um, yeah, as you say, hopefully look forward to it coming back as soon as possible when it's safe yeah exactly and uh let's get the show on the road and get back uh get back boxing that's it all right i wish all you, you and your family and also your dog winston all the best <laughs> take care <laughs> of yourself thank you so much and uh, nice speaking with you